Hey, what's up, people? So check this out. Over the past a few months, uh, one of my brothers and I, we've been sort of brainstorming, designing, and uh, building these somewhat jumbo seven-segment LED displays. And as you can see, just sort of compared to what you'd probably find in some like more normal bits of regular consumer electronics products, it's just slightly noticeably bigger. I mean, if you squint the right way, you might be able to tell that, that there's a slight size difference. But yeah, I mean, it's just it's just barely bigger. <laughs> so anyways, uh, yeah, he uh, asked me if I could help him design some sort of a seven a segment LED display that would be, you know, big and bright. And the reason for that was that back in 2023, he had actually designed his own using some sort of like off the shelf uh, um, products uh, such as a uh, foam board. Uh, like card stock cardboard and some but like white paper to make the lenses and he had used just uh, two five millimeter red leds per segment and so i mean it worked he just wasn't really happy with the light output and what he had done with those is uh, i actually have a, some video footage of it i'll probably you know be raw put it up on this but uh he had built a game that he took to open sauce 2023 and it's like a like a Nerf guard like target game, and so he'd have these uh, lights that would show up, and with the targets where you had to hit. And so basically, the seven segment LED displays were for the scoreboard and all that stuff. Well, he wanted to retake it to uh, this year's uh, Open Sauce 2025, and so we set out to design something that would be you know a little bit better, brighter. And uh, he designed the actual case, and I took care of designing the actual segments. So let me show you how we built these. If I turn it around, you can kind of get a little bit of an idea of what they look like. So they're fairly simple. The actual LED itself is a piece from a uh, some uh, LCD TV LED strips that I sort of cut to shape. And then it designed a reflector for them. The lens is printed with uh, PETG. Inside of the actual segment, there is a lens that's also from a uh, uh, TV LED uh, back lenses or back lenses, uh, back lights, except that it's not the ones that originally came with these LED strips. It's these curved ones. The ones that originally came with these LED strips were these more sort of like trapezoidal shaped ones, whereas the ones I used are these more uh, curved ones. And I actually took these from a the strips of a TV that I just recently repaired. I did <laughs> record footage for that, and I'm hoping maybe it'll go up before this video. And I, I've got like a, I'm kind of <laughs> backed up on producing the videos at the moment, um, although some of those have probably gone out at this point. But anyways, uh, yeah, so it's, it's very simple. I try to build them as, as shallow as I possibly could. And there's also just a little piece of um, gel sheet uh, in each segment just to make them look a little bit redder. So let me light one up, show you sort of what it looks like, and then I'll kind of explain uh, how they're all put together. So each one of these LEDs appears to be rated for about a watt based on my testing. And so I'm going to drive the this LED with about 3.5 volts at almost like 300 milliamps or so. And so if I plug it into power, you can see it lights up right there. I'm pulling, yeah, about... It says 3.5 volts at about 320 uh, milliamps. And so as you can see, it's, it, well, the, I think the camera makes it look a little more washed out. It's somewhat pinkish looking to the naked eye. And, but the light distribution is a little bit uh, better than we would have gotten otherwise if I didn't use the lens uh, inside to distribute the light a little bit. So it's not ideal, but we made do with what we had to work with and you know, we couldn't exactly dump like tons of money into this project. We were trying to keep it as low budget as possible. But when I started trying to design the things, I was originally just going to do maybe something like this, where it's just, uh, let me plug this here. So, okay. So just a reflector with the LED in the middle and then some sort of a uh, colored lens in the front. But the problem is that the lens itself doesn't exactly color the light very well. So if I plug this one into power all right here we go you can see it's really bright but uh, it's gonna be hard to tell but the majority of the light is a really bright dot right in the middle and it looks really like a really washed out a pink looking color so in order to try to get the color to be a little bit darker red i went and i got a sheet of uh, red uh, gel and so if we put this sort of in the way
You can see it looks slightly more reddish. It's still kind of a more of a magenta, but we still get that super bright dot in the middle. So I started trying to think of ways to uh, diffuse that light. Let me actually turn this down. It's really bright. <laughs> There, we'll run it with 0.3 watts. As you can see, with even 0.3 watts, it's still pretty freaking bright. So I started uh, experimenting with different ways to try to diffuse the light, to try to get it to spread out a little more evenly. And then finally, I realized that I had these lenses that I could use. And so, and I mean, since these are made for the uh, LED backlights of um, TVs, they don't exactly bring the light out to the front. They spread it out to the sides. And so taking advantage of the reflector, and this thing spreading the light out to the sides. Once we apply the lens, we can see that the light in the center is no longer like a super bright dot. Now we get a little bit more of a spread. And so once we put everything together, uh, the okay, since it's not glued in, it's, you can see there's a bright spot there. I'm gonna try to shimmy back into the center right there and eh, about there. So yeah, this doesn't look great because it's not fully assembled the way it's supposed to be but we get a little bit uh, better uh, light distribution. We don't get a super bright dot in the middle. And so uh, this worked. And so we decided to just sort of go with this. It was a lot of uh, trial and error. And I actually went through several iterations of designing different shaped reflectors. And yeah, eventually this is what we landed on. So that's what we're sticking with. And as for driving the actual segments, we are going to be using a uh, 8-bit shift register and I believe we were using 74 uh, HC 595s. So I'll have to confirm with my brother on that because he's the one that's got all the hardware right now. I've just been working on trying to get the, the lights uh, to work properly. And also that's going to go to a ULN 2007, which is actually what's going to drive all the cathode sides of all the LEDs. The positives are all going to be tied to a, a positive voltage source, which we originally were going to go with like a 19 point uh, seven volt power supply or so, except that, uh, because we don't have any other way of, uh, current limiting to uh, these LEDs. We were just going to use some dropper resistors. And I think I calculated that we would have needed about like 50 ohm, about five watt resistors, which would have been like <laughs> big old, uh, chunky resistors. So I thought, well, what we can do is that the, uh, 74 HC, uh, 595 has a output enable pin on it. And if we can just use that to sort of uh, PWM the output, so it'll turn the LEDs on and off like, you know, really fast. And we can use that to, you know, sort of adjust uh, like the dimming on it. Uh, maybe we can drive or we can use a slightly lower wattage resistor. So we went with three watt resistors and we hooked up everything. We tried to drive it and they still get uh, pretty hot. So they're dissipating a lot of power to get these down to like the 300 milliamps at 3.5 volts or so. So I think we're going to have to go with the slightly lower voltage on the power supply. And I think we have something figured out for that, although we haven't quite tried it out just yet. But we did get one of these at least to work just on the like a prototype. So we know that we can get them all, you know, working the way we want to. It's just going to take a little bit of maybe like fiddling around with some of the uh, little details. All right, so uh, yeah, let me show you how these are put together. So the recipe for these calls for a small tub of white uh, PLA, 3D printed reflectors, a shallow tub of red PETG, 3D printed uh, lenses, a small medicine bottle of red gel cut to shape, a smaller uh, medicine bottle filled with one watt LEDs also cut to shape, a another medicine bottle full of LED backlight uh, lenses and a cap full of 24 gauge solid wire cut to size and shaped like staples. So we take all of these and we mix them up in a large bowl. Just kind of gently give them a toss and we pour all those into a ceramic uh, baking pan. We pop it into the oven at 410 degrees Fahrenheit for a few hours. After which we carefully pull from the oven a pan of fully assembled LED segments. <laughs> okay, no, but for real though. So there was actually four pieces that I designed in order to make each of these segments. The first one being the actual reflector with uh, some features that made everything easier to assemble. The lens itself that sits on top of the reflector and a cut and drill template for all of the individual LEDs that I was cutting out from the uh, strips. 
So originally, when I was designing the reflectors, I had actually only put one hole into the uh, design just because I was intending to only have like one pin or wire coming in from the bottom and soldering to the top surface of where the LED is mounted because all the traces are on the surface. There's none going through the bottom. There's no like through hole vias or anything like that. But I decided that that would probably be kind of a weak uh, joint and from vibration or something, it could potentially break and then, you know, cause headaches when we're somewhere where we can't uh, repair it. So instead of that, I decided to use two holes and I designed this sort of a oval opening so that the LEDs or the wires coming into the LEDs could be soldered onto the uh, surface. And then that way the, um, the reflector itself doesn't interfere with that solder point on both sides of the uh, cathode and the anode. And then also on the reflector, we can see that there's four holes that actually align with uh, four pins that are present on the uh, bottom surface of each of the uh, lenses that sit on top of the LEDs. And then obviously we have this sort of rectangular cutout for the LED to protrude through. So this design wasn't completely what I had in mind. As you can see, the two walls on the sides are almost parallel. They have a very slight slant to them. I mostly, or I really wanted to have more like slanted walls like this so that the light could, you know, kind of bounce off from the ends up. It's even though it's, it's just a very slight angle, it still actually works. So it wasn't too bad. I just kind of wish that I could have had them, you know, angled a little more to reflect the, a little bit more light. But, well, it, it does the job. The lens itself, it actually has a bit of a step going from the front surface down onto where this has this sort of a flange where it mounts onto the case. And the reason we did that is so that the front surface of the lens could actually sit like flush with the actual case. And then that way it doesn't look like, you know, it's like sticking out or it's like uh, sort of well, inside the box. And so it actually worked out pretty well. And I was able to get the, the sizes just right. So and on the inside, we have uh, a bit of a, yeah, like a sort of a lip that runs all the way around. And that allows us to have the reflector sit inside of that and then actually uh, use some CA glue to uh, glue the reflector to the lens once we had uh, the entire thing assembled. And we also have the pieces of a gel sheet that I cut out uh, inside. So the, the back of the reflector itself actually holds it up against the lens. And then I mentioned that there was a fourth part that I had designed and uh, printed, but uh, that's just a template for actually cutting out the uh, pieces of gel sheet so that they would fit inside of the uh, lens assembly or the uh, reflector and uh, lens assembly. To prepare the LEDs on each strip for use, I first had to shave off the old adhesive that was still remaining on them from the lenses that were mounted on them. And uh, once I had that all shaved off, then I had a nice surface that I could sit the cut and drill template on top of. And using the LED to line it up, I could then take the tin snips and go around to all of the angled sides and cut the excess material off, which gave me some uh, nice, uh, pretty uh, consistently shaped uh, LED pieces. And using that same cut and drill template, I could then go and drill out all the four holes on each of the uh, strips that I was going to solder the uh, pieces of uh, solid core uh, wire to. And on the top surface of each of the LEDs, I took a grinding tool and I just sort of uh, ground away some of the solder mask so that I had somewhere to uh, solder the wires to. And so on each of the uh, bottom sides of uh, the LEDs, I stuck in a piece of the wire and over the top, I just sort of bent them down so that then I could put a little blob of solder right in between the two pieces. And this gave me a nice surface on the bottom side that I could solder or that we could solder some wires to. And then this way, there wasn't any risk of heating up the bottom part would cause the uh, top to uh, loosen up or become detached or anything like that. So it was much safer to go this route than to have like a single wire connected to uh, each of the uh, two terminals on the LEDs. As far as the drive circuitry for uh, each display, it's actually very simple. So we have the seven LEDs uh, all connected on their cathodes to uh, one 50 ohm resistor. That's uh, 50 ohm three watt resistors. And each of those goes to the output of a uh, ULN 2003. And I think I incorrectly said ULN 2007, uh, somewhere near the beginning of the video. So no, we're using ULN 2003s. And those have uh, exactly seven inputs and outputs. So they were kind of a perfect to use for uh, like this um, project. And then on the inputs of those, we have a 74HC595. 
And so this is, uh, it's actually an eight output shift register, but we really only need seven bits. So that's all we're using. So there is one of these boards inside of every single display. And so what we did is we have them basically daisy chained. We have seven pins on the input and then we have seven pins on the output and pretty much the majority of them or six of them are actually like pretty much just straight through, including a five volts and a nine volt line and then ground. Uh, the PWM, the latch and the clock, those all go straight through. The data in is the only pin that goes into the shift register. And then the data out from the shift register is the one that goes to the data out for the next display. So we went in this direction to simplify my brother's original design, which uh, he had used like some decoders and a bunch of transistors to get uh, his LEDs to work the way he wanted to. But doing things this way actually gave us uh, a little bit more control over how we a deal with these LEDs, including uh, having this PWM line going to the output enable of the uh, shift register. Uh, with that, we can actually do some effects on the displays, like where we can kind of like pull some, like dim them, like in and out. So my brother was actually kind of happy with that because, uh, you know, we can do like a little bit more uh, neat things with the with the displays themselves when uh, people are playing the game. So, um, yeah, it's all very simple. There's a couple of capacitors on each of the uh, voltage rails. And I believe we used a couple of resistors on two of the lines going into the shift register because uh, one, on the output enable, we don't necessarily want these LEDs to get stuck on just because of the fact that they are kind of a high powered LEDs and uh, these resistors were uh, capable of getting like pretty hot. So just in case something happened, uh, we, wanted the output enable to uh, be uh, pulled high. That way it disables the the um, output to the LEDs. And so it's just a little bit of a safety feature. And then this is just because I think you can use either one of these two lines to, oh, no, wait, actually, no, you can't. So we have the uh, serial clock uh, coming into this uh, pin 11. This one here is actually to clear the outputs. So if you want to just output everything uh, as a zero, then you would uh, enable this line but we don't really need this. And so because this is active low, if we pull it high, then that means that it's not gonna clear the outputs. Basically, if we wanna clear everything, we're just gonna do that with all the data coming in. Oh, and by the way, all of this stuff is gonna be controlled with an, with an ESP32, I believe my brother said he was using. So yeah, we have the data coming in, we have the data going out. So we have six displays all connected uh, serially basically. And so we just have to push out whatever bits are required to form either digits or uh, characters or, you know, whatever we want. And so they're fairly flexible. To physically secure the six displays to each other, my brother designed some cavities on each of the cases where you could fit a small butterfly shaped wedge between the two displays that you wanted to uh, physically attach together. And so that worked out pretty well. I don't have any footage of the displays actually attached to each other, but I think you can kind of get an idea just from this other B-roll that I, that I have. Now that I've undoubtedly bored you with the technical aspects of the displays, let me tell you about the fun part. Not only will open source attendees get a chance to play the game, but you will have the opportunity to win ducks. We haven't quite worked out the game details just yet, at least not as of recording this, but here's what we're thinking. We are going to have a minimum score, a value that we haven't determined just yet. If a player meets this minimum score, they will win one duck of their choice. However, if a player exceeds this score and sets a new high score, they will win a bonus duck. The first player to set a high score for the day will be the first to win the bonus duck. After that, players will need to beat this high score in order to win the bonus duck. We will have a total of 200 ducks, so if you happen to be watching this and will be attending Open Sauce, so please do stop by and try the game. We will be at the 622 by Sunrise booth, and we hope to see you there. Once again, thank you for watching. I'll be seeing you all around the bench, and hopefully this time sooner rather than later.